Welcome to VaderBox. I'm Baby Francisco. And I'm Ezra Roizen. Once again, we have Adeo Ressi, the founder of The Funded, as our guest host. And this week, we're going to take a look at Zynga, which is the number one online gaming company on the web. And we're going to listen to Mark Pincus. I'm the founder and CEO of Zynga, and we are the leading social gaming service on the internet. We currently uh, offer 26 games across Facebook, MySpace, Bebo, a bunch of other social networks like Tagged, High Five, and also on the iPhone, where our Scramble game was number one last week, and our Mafia Wars game we think will soon be number one. We have um, 9 million daily active users and over 40 million monthly units, about 220 employees, and we're profitable, and we're hiring. I just want to clarify something. They're, so, they're number one in social gaming, which is actually distinct from other forms of gaming. Did I say so online gaming? They're yeah, social you said, gaming. You Sorry. said I'm uh, number one in online was, gaming. Uh, Off the top of my head, I can it. have some guess on who number one yeah, in yeah, yeah. online gaming is, but it's not Zynga. Okay, Zynga. but it's social gaming. Right. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, this, in the, for this company, it's not will they be successful, it's how do you, how, how successful are they going to be, how big is the opportunity, how, how far will they go, because it's, it's past the point yeah, of, they're, it's they're tipped right. over into a hugely successful yeah. company. They are huge. I mean, yeah. everyone, they're, they're, look, look, let's be clear. In the Valley right now, he's a rock star. Right. They're, you know, like, the people are, he could be, in terms of the world of gaming, he's the, you know, Eric Schmidt slash Larry Page, Sergey Brin of gaming. Yeah. Uh, the guy has built uh, one from nowhere in a short period of time a, a huge company that's actually managing to monetize a previously uh, uh, difficult audience. I mean, it's so I, difficult to monetize on social networks. So yeah, I mean, project. and which is which is heroic. I mean, we when, when I ran a. a social gaming company, so you know, their success is uh, something I cherish for them because it's really hard. You're looking at conversion rates of like 0.2%, 0.1%, and so for them to get that kind of revenue, hundreds, over a hundred million dollars a year is a rumor on the street, well over, uh, from that type of audience. Amen. Yeah. I think it's I think it's the uh, how profitable can you be? I mean, you can have a lot of revenue. So Jeremy Liu did this great piece on looking at gaming companies, the MM or the multiplayer gaming companies, and in, in, in China because they're way advanced, well advanced. Um, and you you can't so draw you can't draw comparisons to well, China you know, or Korea in terms of what type of business it is. I mean, basically, what he was saying was it's, it's a hits business, and that's what this is. It's yeah, hits definitely. Right. And that's and I guess that's so so you're already in the land of the, of the giants. So you're in the titan land of great companies that are phenomenally successful and have great business models. The question is. What are the comparables, and how do you think and contextualize? I, I already this? know what he needs to do because I came from this there business. You have it. So, <laughs> I mean, it, all you, right, then. Yeah. Mark, are, pay attention. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. Mark's a mentor. I know him very well. Look, sure. to all be right, blunt, right. Bambi, here he is. He's number one. He's kicking rear. He's monetizing. What do you do? You just said it. It's a hits based business. You got to go out and be like, boom, acquire, boom, acquire, boom, acquire. And why? Because you got companies like Play First you know, one-tenth the revenue, but a hit franchise that with the, with the sort of Zynga magic, like, yeah. now you, you say, okay, hit franchise, hit franchise, hit yeah. franchise, take magic bottle of Zynga juice, sprinkle it, you know, acquire it, sprinkle yeah. on hit franchise, replicate. Then you probably need to go public sooner or later because it's going to be expensive and you're going to need to have currency and capital expensive. and all kinds it's of stuff. Gonna it's not going to be that expensive because, in fact, a lot of these companies with single hit games have really flat revenues in the yeah. 10 to $20 million range. But and I, can, I know for a fact what their revenues are having come out of it. You're assuming that they'll continue to be hit games. Yeah. Uh, well, well, one thing is clear. I mean, come on. Bejeweled, it's been a hit uh, since it was released on, you know, Palm version one. So a lot of these, uh, a lot of these games have long shelf lives because the, the mechanic has been fine-tuned and, and they, what they rinse, wash, and repeat, different platforms, things. I'm not saying that Bejeweled is a game, but certainly a, a target company right now, and probably saying it here, I just juiced their valuation by like a few million dollars, but you know, absolutely. <laughs> you the, them. No, no, I would never buy PopCap, but buying buying the guys who make like Diner Dash. Um, right. 
things. Give, them a, give Mark a list if you're sitting here talking to Mark. Yeah. Who'd they be? Oh, I'm out of the business now, and I don't want to. I don't want to disrupt things. But definitely look for who has the hit content, acquire them, and uh, sprinkle the zinga juice. I mean, you, I don't know if you know this, but Midway, who has a huge catalog of like hit games from the past, sold for thirty-three million dollars. Right. He he could certainly have done stuff with with the catalog there. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think that so for me, I like um, Texas Hold'em. I think Mark should start selling coffee. You know, instead of the beer, <laughs> that would be good, like Bailey's and coffee. Yeah. I'd buy that. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, my I guess my thoughts are just following along the same lines. On one hand, if they're in the land of the giants, you have Google, which is, you know, the supreme startup in the last 15 years. Is mint money. I mean, right. it's a phenomenally successful company that has a huge brand presence, which just basically money comes out of the walls of that place, which is great. On the other side, you got Facebook, which is owns the owns the user base but has a much tougher time making money, and MySpace a much tougher time making money. These guys, where do they fall? How do they find themselves? In you know, the middle. How do they, you know, can they put themselves in the middle? The danger being in the middle is you got to keep getting those, those, those great games because the affinity will eventually drop off if the games, you know, if the competition here is going to be phenomenal. The games have sticking power. The games though, have so, some sticking so power. So you, well, they, they oh, you're right. They don't, have, they don't have eternal sticking power, yeah. but they do. So what you do is you just... Boom, you buy the franchises. I'm telling you, these... Right. these but still, I mean, if Jeremy Liu, I thought, you know, I know they're not uh, apples to apples here comparisons, but if you look at the top gaming companies in China, they were trading... You cannot like compare it. Money. Honestly, yeah. you would look at China. They're, they're guys who bring games from Asia area. that are kicking rear in Asia, and they like, and put them in America, and like, you know, no one does it then. <laughs> no, I, I'm just saying, like you can't, they, they don't, tra you can't translate the dynamic of Asia yeah. into the Western world. It just doesn't work. I've tried it. I've been there. I brought yeah. games from the the the. I'm going home. <laughs> What's well, <it's> just games? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. All right, all right. I think we. Uh, gave I agree. Jay was the expert. He's the resident expert yes, in this one. Yes. So I, you know, I, I'm not that big of an expert. If I were the expert, I'd be like a multi. Well, I am. Uh, hey, anyway, so the. Uh, the but, and so so is Mark going to raise more money? Uh, you know, he's going to. Uh, Mark gonna fall is Dave's raising Dave's, money. Yeah, if he's going to follow the daily. Word on Dave's word Dave's on the street, by the way, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, is that there's a large a large amount of uh, he's capital. He's making so much revenue. Why is he? Why does he need to do it? I'll tell you why. It's cheap. Uh, so when when you're doing, there there are a couple times. Whenever money is cheap in the world, take it, <laughs> right? I mean, if the government walked in and said, "I'll give you a hundred million dollars to make your house nicer," you'd be like, "No." What's the valuation going to be? <laughs> I think Mark is going to pull down an obscenely large round mm -hmm. with an obscenely high valuation, and good for him. And because he can do it, mm -hmm. then he's going to turn around and use. Now look, what what are the things that are going to happen? Employees, some employees will probably take some cash off the table, which mm -hmm. is the right thing to do. And then he'll probably do some select M and A to test the waters on a lower level. And when people see that he's a buyer, then the bigger guys will fall in line. He'll probably pick off one or two, maybe go public, and then yeah. buy some well, of the rest. Mark That's has my taken guess. Taken a company public before, so he's probably. Going to do it again. Yeah. My guess. Amen. Great company. Great company. I think the question is, how do you navigate the giants? Okay. All right. There you have it, Mark. For what it's worth. Thanks, Two Bambi. cents. Yeah. I'm Bambi Francisco. You've been watching Vader Box. We'll see you next time on Vader News.